Today I'm looking at the RF Explorer handheld spectrum analyzer. Switch it on. On the left hand side is your 4.8 to 6.1. On the right hand side is 15 through to 2.7 gigs. The little spectrum um, display there is quite nice. Select the menu. Just flick your way through the different menu and set up on the uh, on the front display so that it's completely handheld and you need you know on its own. Um, the return gets you back to the front screen. Left and right buttons, in this case the right button, um, will take you through the frequency, and the enter button will do hold, etc. Now I'm going to plug this in. This is a mini USB, so you just need to find yourself a mini USB cable. Um, I have one here. I'm just going to plug that into the base. I'm turning it off. The unit will turn itself back on once it's actually charged. There you go. Or it starts charging and it will turn itself on. From this point on, we can then go over to the software. Um, away we go. So what I've done is I've gone to um, RF Explorer up here, just done a little search, gone to the j3.rfexplorer.com website, gone to the download section, selected software in my case for Windows, taken version, the latest version here, downloaded it, got the zip file and actually installed it, which I'll do now. Um, once you've opened the zip file, there's your ex uh, uh, executable file there. Just run that one. Away you go, job done. Once you've done that, it gives you these two little files. Now these are the interesting ones. Um, you've also you've got firmware here as well if you want to update it. At this stage, I'm not going to bother. It also gives you the documents there, the help documents, so you can actually get any help that you need. Um, and you can delete the, the zip file once you've done this. Um, you've also got some example files in here so that you can set some bits and pieces up or just have a little play. Um, also, it gives you two shortcuts to the executable file. One offers no OpenGL support, and this other one here offers um, OpenGL support. I'm going to use this one because I find it the most fun. So we'll just start that one up. The software will open. Okay, now if it doesn't connect automatically, in, I've actually connected the device via the uh, USB port underneath, um, and the unit just switches itself on, even though it's switched off on the top of the box. Okay, so here we've actually got this is the connection. In my case, it's COM6, yours might be something else, and you connect or disconnect. Once you've disconnected it, the disc, the uh, it will offer you to you know to choose between the com ports. You need to identify which one it is. Leave this one at the five hundred thousand, and then you just say connect. Once that's happened, the unit will just sort of uh, kind of spring to life. Now, along the top here, okay, this sort of section um, here, you've actually this is like the like the toolbar if you like. Um, this actually gives you quite a lot of uh, information and it's quite crowded at the moment, uh, I think. So what we'll do is we'll start turning some things off and you can see what it actually does. Um, first of all, this is run, this is hold. So here if I click this, it will stop it. If I click it again, it will start it. And then I can hit hold and it will actually hold it and then start again quite quickly. This gives you the sample rate. You can increase this sample rate if you wish or decrease it so that you get a slightly better um, resolution or uh, at least a little bit more um, lively display. Um, and there's some other things here, um, iterations. Don't quite know what that does, but let's just play with it to see what it does do. Um, not much. Not that I can see anyway. We'll leave it back where it was somewhere where it was, which was I think it was about 10, something like that. Um, okay, this here is trace mode. So we'll turn some of this stuff off and you can sort of see what it what it starts to do. Look, um, it always wants the real time one um, live and I kind of like this single wire um, and the maybe with, uh, with the maximum peak and then you can actually do a field trace as well and it will show you 
a, like a history of where some of the signals were. And you can see with this, like a, it's like a waterfall thing here, you can see where some of the signals are coming through. Um, just so that you can, um, here you can see the what the, the frequency is. And we can change this, this change it for 145 spot um, 425. I believe there's usually a, a, a net on about now. Um, yeah, there's a transmission there at about uh, 146, uh, 236. Um, don't know what that is. That's an interesting one. That might be a little bit of uh, two meter data. Um, sort of going on there not sure um so you can kind of see you know how this thing's starting to work and it's actually a really clever little device very very useful indeed um for just picking out you know bits and pieces um so here obviously we've had a very quick look at the um the the actual uh, frequency sort of area um and you can send the data to the uh, the actual silver box you can reset it so it'll go back to the standard one um, or just you can reset the actual VFO if you like. Um, here you've got markers you can um, you can change like marker IDs and uh, you can enable and disable them you can add delta mark markers and all that sort of stuff and here you can set um, frequency offsets and you can track real-time average peaks and all that sort of stuff and then you can do a locked um, a, a frequency offset if you like you need to set that I think somewhere else in the in the menu okay that kind of takes us off this little main little thing here um, and what we we'll do is we we'll just go over to the waterfall now this takes us over to um, kind of like a, a magic carpet if you like very similar sort of display to the um, Yaesu FTDX 101 kind of uh, 3D grass and sort of a signal kind of uh, um, display you can sort of see the signal here being sort of like cast just outside of the uh, outside of the the actual uh, uh, base you know of the uh, RF signal um, and what else have we got on here we've got a power channel now this gives us some idea of the signal strength that's coming in um, and again, you can you've got th this sort of control area still remain. Some of it disappears, and then the bits that are important to this still remain. Here you've got a remote screen. Now I'm not sure what this this really does, to be honest. Um, I've not actually seen this sort of thing before. Um, I'm just trying to. Uh, no, I'm not really sure what it does. Um, Again, you can probably have a little experiment with that. Oh, okay. Interesting. It basically replicates the screen of the RF Explorer, um, but you need to put a figure in the sample rate there, and you can save the bitmap and all that sort of thing. So we can sort of see the screen popped up there. That's fairly cool, I think. Um, you can change the screen color. You can view a grid of some description remove the header all right okay i'm i'm impressed with that that's quite good um what else can we do up here on these tabs configuration uh here you can set some of the record uh, recorded data uh, information and you can set here this frequency calibration and uh, the um, offsets and all that sort of stuff it's all all here um what else can we do this gives you some kind of report, what's happened, like a history of the connection and all that sort of stuff. Um, and you can do debugs and stuff there. Signal generator. Now, if you had a signal generator attached, and like I said earlier, there's, um, there is actually a signal generator available. You can control the signal generator from this end. You can power it on and off. You can set the different frequencies and you can do all that sort of stuff. And you can use both the signal generator and the spectrum analyzer in conjunction with one another for testing things like filters. Um, you might want to say do um, duplexes maybe, or uh, I don't know, anything you like really the, the sky's the limit and here it's got some kind of data sniffer um, which I've never been able to sort of uh, get working I don't think but we'll put some information in there see if it just does it 
Will it work? Send config. It did something. Um, decoder on hold. Okay, well, it's doing something, and the screen's changed. That's interesting. So there you go. Well, let's change that. So now it's gone back to normal. Um, so we've got a data sniffer. This actually sets the screen on the actual uh, device to, to sniffer mode. So it's obviously looking for something. Again, something to look into. Um, good fun. Um, up the top here in the standard sort of um, window options, you've got a whole host of things here to auto load models, to load um, correction files, um, to use some kind of uh, amplitude correction data, save screenshots and all that sort of stuff. Here you've got the two different, uh, or you've got the options here for dark mode and light mode. Um, you've got display area control, so you can turn the actual, this like toolbar off if you like. Um, you can show grids um, and you can uh, include the waterfall in main screen, bottom alignment, you can set it over to one side if you like. So now when we go back over here, it's all changed. Um, do I like it in dark mode more? I think so. Um, what else can we do? And that's just quite a nice view, I think. Um, let's run it and see what it does. There you go, I like that, it's nicer. Right, what else can you do? Um, so you can change the perspective view. All right, so we'll get the waterfall up. Let's have a quick look at that. Um, so we'll go view and we can say uh, waterfall perspective. So we can change it, change it round, view, waterfall, uh, waterfall perspective, isot. There you go, that's quite nice. Um, and 2D, so you can make it a large one or a small one, but the, um, I quite like that isometric one. You can see quite a lot on that one. It's quite nice. What else can you do down here? Um, you can say waterfall visible, transparent waterfall. I don't know what that's all about. Floor. Well, it just shows you the uh, floor. I don't know why you would want to do that. Um, and transparent waterfall. I think that just... Yeah, all right, I quite like that. Um, okay, so that's the view um, section done. The device one is, this one's a bit more um, a bit more interesting. You can actually set the, the device to show um, the active connections. And if we go back here, you can see now here, it tells you around this area here, uh, it tells you which one. And if we sort of say device um, show active connections, it just basically removes that. Um, this side window. I quite like that actually, it's quite nice. Um, what else can we do here? Um, right, okay, so now we can change the uh, connector. Now at the moment this is um, checking uh, RF signals all the way up. Um, we can change it here to all the way up to about 2.7 gigs. Now, if we put it onto the other radio, which goes from 4.8 gigs up to 6.1, so we're going to enable the left antenna connector, and you'll see that this red dot here will move to over here. So if we do that, it should reset. There you go, the red dot's moved, and now we're actually checking the, or we're looking for the five gigs range. Now, there is, over here you'll see, you're probably going to see my Wi-Fi um, sort of uh, kicking off here because um, it's running on five gigs and you can see it's spiking up. Look, um, that's most likely my, my Wi-Fi. Um, what else can we see here? Um, enable left and right. Um, enable remote max hold. Not sure about what that one does. Refresh max hold buffer. Automatic LCD off. At the moment, the little silver box, the LED is switched on. If you click that, it goes off, it's gone off now. Um, what else? Um, update remote amplitude, don't know, configure the offset. That there obviously will configure the offset if there's any, if it needs adjusting, um, but you need a really good reference to do that. Um, sniffer, not sure what this one does at the moment. Um, something to learn about, um, but you can set this up into sniffer mode over here somewhere, signal sniffer, it's in beta. Um, and it is a little bit temperamental, I've noticed. Um, 
and that's pretty much that in that it's got a good help system here and there's all your um, information here so you can get your your online help and uh, signal generator user manual and the analyzer user manual and here you can set you can select from presets you can select a default you can set your own one you can do all sorts of things from here you can load save and then delete them now i think that's pretty much it this is a really really useful piece of kit um really handy to have in your um in your toolbox um they're not hugely expensive now i particularly at work i actually use the signal generator quite a lot when we when we get uh, um, the units that come through just to initial tests if someone says they're not receiving or they're deaf or whatever it might be um, I can instantly ascertain whether or not the actual unit is potentially faulty and needs to go further on down the chain because what it means then is I have a, a particular set of values which I know will will if it performs as those values I know that the receiver is good um, and if the if it comes up with anything strange i then can kind of process the whole information you know the the the, the job and then get it sort of uh, pushed through to um, service where it may need to go on for sort of uh, maybe further inspection or investigation or whatever it might be it saves time saves the customer money um and you know ultimately it's you know it's a really useful bit of kit now um who uses this? Um, typically, it's people for stage, screen, and film, all that sort of stuff. Colleges, universities, um, professional RC kind of drone pilots. Um, we've seen these things go out to all sorts of, uh, of people um, for investigating noise. Um, in fact, actually, there's another. There's an optional set of antennas that you can uh, you can also get, which enable the like NFC um, type kind of um, uh, um, investigation. So if you've got something like a a faulty IC, you can actually on a PCB, you can actually use it to sniff out problems and uh, you know behaviour that perhaps shouldn't be as it's behaving. Um, really useful bits of kit think that's it bought everything everyone enough um now um thanks for watching see you next time and um not sure what i'm going to do next time i'm i'm going to have a little look uh, through this the stuff at uh, work that uh, is interesting so again thanks for watching see you next time bye bye